Welcome to Cube Conversations, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman at Wikibon headquarters, and we're going to talk about the move from virtualization to hybrid cloud. Chad Sackich is here. He's joining us uh, from up north. Chad, it's great to see you today. Thanks very much for coming on the Cube. Dave, it's my pleasure, Stu. It's always good to see you guys. So, Stu, I want to start with you. Um, for years, we've done uh, research uh, on virtualization, generally VMware specifically. In particular, the early years of our research focused on integration um, because storage, as we know, was a problem, right? The first VMworld I ever went to, I said, wow, storage really is breaking, you know, as a result of all this virtualization. So the community, the industry, the ecosystem really stepped up and, and the focus was on integration. We did a lot of work there, but we've now shifted our emphasis. Can you talk about that a little bit in terms of our research scope? Sure, Dave, and I think one of the key things we want to talk into is that difference between what virtualization is and, and cloud. Uh, because, you know, I think back, you know, gosh, I go back seven, eight years ago, uh, when the term private cloud came out, there was the true cloud in the public cloud, and then there was this virtualization stuff. Uh, and really, there's been a lot of work in the industry to say what differentiates virtualization uh, from cloud, and a lot of it is what we're talking about in this research, which is the management and the orchestration. It's that automation layer that really is going to make your whole operations environment just much simpler, whereas virtualization alone was really about utilization of your, uh, of your equipment, and as, as you, you mentioned, Dave, really the integration of all of the pieces. It was virtualization in many ways broke storage and networking. We spent the last decade getting those pieces to work, and in many ways, the industry can claim a lot of victories because now storage works really well with virtualization, networking's gotten much better, so it's that mm -hmm. next step to really help the orchestration and help really transform what IT staffs are doing, which is rather than managing uh, what Chad would call the cylinders of excellence uh, inside the organization, uh, we're really talking about building cloud architects uh, and uh, allowing the business to focus on the applications and have more agility uh, to deliver for the business itself. And th that's what we focused on is really these, these new orchestration areas and specifically it's for users that have bought into the VMware ecosystem or using that, how do we use you know, the whole you know, vCenter and, and expand beyond that to uh, all of the pieces to make a, a true hybrid cloud which is going to tr transform your IT environment. So Chad, I wonder if we could bring you into the conversation here. Yeah, yeah, here. of course. Um, th in thinking about, you and I have, s have spoken many, many times about this so-called so journey, and you've sort of laid it out. Many, I remember years ago, s just chalk talking with you, and a lot of what you talked about has come true. You know, the whole notion of storage moving toward uh, is sort of this invisible uh, resource. But I yep. wonder, where are our customers on the maturity model? Do they really, accept and understand that virtualization is not cloud, it's not hybrid cloud, and they've, totally. they've got to do more work. I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. So in my experience, and uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a joy being here, but it's also a joy being on the road uh, with customers all around the world, and uh, the biggest of the big and the smallest of the small, every single one of them invariably is trying to build uh, a capability which is a robust um, hybrid cloud model which again, f you can drop buzzword uh, bingo and come right down to, we're trying to build a self-service portal, high degree of automation, all the way through the infrastructure part of the stack, all the way up to the PaaS and the SaaS services that they offer internally. The, uh, the reality of it is, is that the problems of the past that you described largely are cracked. Um, there's still times where people suffer from storage or networking problems, but the name of the game now is that inside the enterprise, they want infrastructure as a service, the agility comes from the management and orchestration domain, and there's really two dominant ecosystems. So your, your research was focused on the, the VMware ecosystem, namely the vRealize suite, but there's another uh, ecosystem which is appearing alongside, which is the OpenStack ecosystem. Both of those things are now really the things that are driving the ultimate value of infrastructure, which is to be invisible. That hasn't changed, Dave, from the first time you and I talked about it. The idealized infrastructure is simply invisible, provisioned, automated, and consumed by an application. And uh, that means you have to break down all of those human silos that exist. You know, that sounds like the beginning of a bad horror movie, breaking down human silos. And then we turn them into Soylent Green. 
Uh, <laughs> no, but in, in all seriousness, I mean, uh, literally I was talking with a, one of our biggest customers um, in the world in the finance vertical was actually at the, the briefing center in, in Hopkinton on Friday. And, um, you know, they're, they're already 80, 90 percent virtualized on their x86 workloads. So that's, that's ground that, you know, vi hey, victory achieved. We saved a lot of CapEx. Now, how do we uh, get out of the business of provisioning storage? How do we get out of the business of provisioning a VM? How do we defer that all and do it programmatically in a way which is analogous to the public cloud models that exist? Can we do it while retaining control of capital assets on the ground? So that brings up two questions. So when you think about things like VASA, VAAI, and now soon to be VVOLs, Mm -hmm. uh, do those things still matter, um, or is the attention just sort of shifting? And I wonder if you could address that. They they, they matter. Um, you know, that's like um, what's what's the analogy here? You know, when you go to a great restaurant, when was the last time you went to a restaurant, Dave? Uh, last night, actually. Uh, was it good? <laughs> it was okay. Um, so so, presumably, if you had severe intestinal flu it would have been a somewhat less awesome experience. Indeed. Right? But in general, while your body is functioning and functioning properly, the thing that makes your restaurant outing awesome or not has more to do with the meal itself, right? So Vasa, VAI, Vivals, um, the core internal plumbing of how the ecosystem integrates with VMware is, is to some degree like, hey, you better have an autoimmune system that works your digestive tract better have a good flora and fauna that allows your, you to eat and enjoy your meal. But so long as those are true, um, and the vendor ecosystem needs to make sure that they're true, um, the real challenge is how do I as a chef make an awesome meal so it's not just good but great. And that's frankly about higher up in the stack, the management and orchestration layer, creating the right service catalog, that's the recipe for a good meal. So, okay, so those are the things that I don't think about as long as they're working properly. Um, right. Now, the second question that came out of the discussion that we had, you had earlier was this notion of multi-cloud. So it seems like the world, whether it's VMware, whether it's OpenStack and var varieties of OpenStack, whether it's a AWS through its API, Google, Azure, et cetera, it looks like we're headed toward a world of multi-clouds. Absolutely. How, how will EMC play in, in that world? What are your thoughts there? Um, so, it's, it's been a very fascinating uh, last 12 months of customer dialogue, because for, for a little while, and I think the, the, the press is still thinking that it's a VMware versus OpenStack battle. Um, to, to, there's some degree that that is true, but it's, True only, you know, a small amount. For the most part, it's little overlap and it's kind of an and. Likewise, in the public cloud domain, people are starting to realize, you know what, Azure is fundamentally different than AWS. And I'm going to use Salesforce.com and I'm going to use HR services like SuccessFactors as SaaS. That's a form of cloud. And I'm going to have multiple public clouds that I'm going to choose, some for infrastructure, some for SaaS. In other words, as an IT consumer, I'm going to need a MNO cloud layer, like an, you know, a layer that federates these cloud services at all three layers of the stack across multiple clouds. And in fact, many customers that I'm finding increasing the larger ones are actually building two on-premise private clouds as part of their hybrid cloud strategy, one that's focused on VMware for the domain of, of pets, of workloads that are built with high expectations of infrastructure resilience. And then literally right beside it, they have a parallel project where they're building one that uses OpenStack as the MNO layer that they're using for new applications that they're building on top of, you know, the, the applications that are more like cattle using the classic pets and cattle meme, right? The, so the thing that's interesting is that means then you have at the top layer, the vCloud APIs, and you have the OpenStack APIs just on-prem. Like this isn't a hypothetical. This is a customer that uh, spoke at the OpenStack Summit in, uh, in November and that I interact with pretty frequently. So for them, they're very interested in what are you doing in the domain of management and orchestration above infrastructure as a service. There's lots of interesting players in this domain. Uh, in this case, that customer was using a company called Scalar which is you know, a startup that's focused on multi-cloud management abstraction layers. 
The other th interesting thing is that there's actually a layer above that, which is the bottom layer of the app stack. So you can think of Cloud Foundry, it, its bottom layer has this thing called Bosch. Bosch will go and it'll provision an open stack environment, it'll provision AWS, it'll provision vCloud APIs, it'll also go directly to vCenter if, if you're not using uh, the vRealize suite. And if you think about it, that is, so long as you're using Cloud Foundry, it is an inter-cloud abstraction layer, right? So I think that there's a, you asked the question of what are we going to do about this? We're going to play at this in multiple ways across the federation. Number one, Pivotal will continue to expand what Bosch does around deploying paths to multiple clouds in an open cloud fashion, number one. Number two, VMware will continue to expand the vRealize automation uh, tool set, which already supports AWS, to continue to expand out and support other things, including OpenStack. And then number three, EMC will continue to expand the capability, both organically and inorganically, of providing inter-cloud federated services. Um, that'll appear in a couple of forms, Dave. So the, the first form that'll show up will be that we're embracing the public cloud model so that we can say there's backup for uh, Office 365. There's backup for Salesforce.com. Those are things, that's why we acquired spanning, right? So there's, there's going to be new forms of backup, storage, uh, a persistence of information, and analytics that occur inside these federated models. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a more complex ecosystem than I think people think at first glance, but there's, uh, there's the delusional value of simple answers, and then there's the true value of actually embracing the fact that the world is uh, multifaceted, right? So, so that's great background, and sort of sets up my next question, Stu, which is how do you research this stuff? So we used to research the plumbing, you know, the, 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 the connections underneath, which was what we spent time on, on VAI and who has the integration points and you know, an exhaustive set of research. How, how have you changed your research, yourself, David Floyer, Nick Allen, to accommodate this changing ecosystem that, that Chad just described? And how, how are the horses you know, <laughs> laying out in the track? Yeah, so, so, so Dave, first of all, you, you're, you're right. There was a lot of uh, work that we needed to do to make sure that we had a contained scope because cloud is really complicated and there's so many factors. Chad went through a whole bunch of them uh, and if, if we had tried to you know, boil the ocean and give the landscape of cloud, forget it, it would have taken us a couple of years and by the time we finished, we'd be two years out of date. So what we really focused on here was both extending what we had done for the last three or four years on, on VMware and extending the first part of that into uh, really the hybrid cloud management and orchestration, but looking from the storage standpoint and for customers that are seeing VMware as one of their really strategic partners. And of course, there's many ways to skin this cat. Um, if you look at the result of, uh, of the research, uh, EMC came out with the deepest integrations, which wasn't all that surprising. They obviously are you know, the parent company of VMware and spent a lot of effort. Uh, Chad, his whole team, and all of the Federation working hard on that. Uh, but you've got uh, companies like NetApp that are right behind them uh, on that. Uh, not far behind them, and everybody else has worked really good on all the, uh, you know, VASA and VAI pieces, and are working through the vRealize suite uh, and I expanding what they're doing there. So it was limited to VMware. Starting to talk about some of the other hooks, um, some little bit of compare and contrast as to what's going on in OpenStack, and it's something we've spent a lot of time looking into. But it's really kind of storage, storage as a service, uh, and some of the APIs from a management s standpoint that storage companies can hook into. So you were measuring Dave, the efficacy I? of those capabilities, is that is that right? Yeah. 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 Okay, well, and, and I wanted to just inject, interject one thing, guys. My apologies for interrupting. No, but, no problem. Um, it, you're absolutely right that this whole ecosystem view is an impossible problem to tackle. You prioritized, in my opinion, right, guys, because again, talking with lots of customers, well, there's lots of interest in OpenStack in how do Azure packs connect to the Azure domain. The reality amongst the enterprise is the vast majority of them are using VMware as the virtualization strata, and the vast majority of them are using the vRealize suite, previously the vCloud suite, as their MNO strata. So in other words, you're, you're doing an assessment of the, 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 the sweet spot of the mass, of the mass market. Um, it's very fragmented, by the way. There's lots of other management orchestration tools, UCSD, CIAC, blah, 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 blah. It's like a alphabet soup. 
but that where you center the research is the mass, at least the customers that I see. The second thing that I'd say is while I love that your research suggested that you know we're doing okay by our customers in terms of uh, integration with that management domain, to some degree that was actually forced on us. So uh, again, I don't want this to come across sounding um, arrogant in any way, right? But we have an insanely broad portfolio. It is not uncommon for a customer to have data domain, Isilon, VNXs, VMAXs, Extreme IO, VPlex, Recover Point, all sitting underneath VMware, and they're using it for different workloads and with different blah, 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 blah. And the reality of it is, is that that actually means that, to some degree, our management and orchestration complexity is actually more important to us than it is to ecosystem at large. Now, I think that that problem actually applies to ecosystem at large, but there's a reason why we're so maniacally focused on how do we abstract and how do we automate, not just in the VMware ecosystem, but in all ecosystems. Yeah, Chad, that, that's a great point, and that's where I, I know your vision for where uh, Viper's going to bring EMC, because if I look at something like Amazon, they've just got a platform and they've got you know, a ton of services that they can layer on top of that. And that portfolio while it allows you to reach a you know, broad spectrum of the marketplace, um, you need to be able to make it easier for customers to be able to get all of the services across all of your options. Mm -hmm. All right guys, we got to leave it there. I'm sorry we're out of time. Chad, thanks so much for coming on. And Stu, appreciate you uh, running down the research. You can check out that research on uh, wikibon.org. And uh, thanks for watching everybody. This is CUBE Conversations with Stu Miniman and Chad Sakic and Dave Vellante, we'll see you next time.